So we have learned that water pollution is a source of pollution. We need food to eat, just like plants need food to eat, and their food is fertilizer. Natural fertilizers include animal waste or compost, but most farmers use human-made chemical fertilizers. Farmers spread the chemicals on their fields. Plants take in the nutrition through their roots. Okay, so we are going to draw a root system, okay? So underneath your plants, draw you some roots. I'll be a carrot. Okay, perfect. Carrots have roots. Every plant has roots. That's how it gets nutrition. Is carrot a base, basically a root? It's a vegetable. Roots are roots. Carrot is a carrot. So this yellow stuff I'm going to draw here is going to be our fertilizer, okay? Okay. So the farmers put fertilizer on the plants. That's how it gets its food. And it gets it through the roots. So the roots take the nutrition and absorb the nutrition, which is the fertilizer. But not all of the fertilizer is taken up by plants. Some of it dissolves in rainwater. So what happens is it rains. Remember how we said the rain goes into the ground, right? Right. And you have a puddle of water here. So just like we have a field, the rain and the fertilizer are going to get what? Water. This plant does not take in all the fertilizer that it sprayed on it by the farmers. When it rains, the fertilizer and rain get washed away. This is called run off. The water runs off. Okay? I think we're that is science. So as you're drawing your rain, you're going to then make a puddle here. So here is your puddle. So when it runs off the field, it goes into nearby lakes and rivers. So here is a little, we're just going to put, this is a lake or river. So you guys are really just drawing what I'm drawing so you can understand what water pollution is. Water plants such as algae also eats fertilizer. So algae. What? See this green algae right here? This is algae. Does anybody have a fish at home? Like a pet fish? No. No? no. Okay, well, if you... Okay, think about Finding Nemo. Remember when he is in the dentist's office? Mm -hmm. And they plug the little... They put a rock in the cleaner. The automatic cleaner that cleans the water. <laughs> they shove a rock in there. What happens to the fish tank? When it's not being cleaned, it gets a bunch of disgusting stuff. It gets disgusting stuff. It gets algae. It turns what color? Green. Green. Algae's green. Oh, algae well, have grown quickly in this lake thanks to extra nutrients from fertilizer in the water. So, this fertilizer, remember, it acts as food. Just like we have here. Perfect scenario. Orchid plant food mist. So we have an orchid up in the window. It's a plant flower. Mm -hmm. This is plant food. So this has what in it? If this is food for the plant, what does it have in it? Uh, 
fertilizer. Fertilizer. Good. I heard you all saying it. So when this runoff, the water runs off the field into a lake or river, is there still yellow fertilizer in here? No. Yeah. Does the algae eat the fertilizer? Yeah. Yeah. So is there going to be a lot of algae in a field that has runoff fertilizer? No. Yeah. Well. If it's food. For some reason, I try to make mine exactly look like yours, and it's not working. Well, get you, get the right colors. The colors help see everything. Yeah. Good job, Kalina. Yes, that looks gorgeous. All right, I'm going to show those of you guys at home what some of our students looks like. Very nice. Very nice. Pesticides are another source of water pollution. These chemicals kill the weeds, germs, and insects. In the United States alone, farmers spray more than one billion pounds of what? pesticides on their crops each year. During spraying, so this farmer right here has a little sprayer. You see the little stuff coming out of the sprayer. This is the chemicals that kill the weeds. It kills germs. It kills insects that harm the crop. Like some of you guys do corn as your crop. Don't you think there's going to be other birds or little bugs that come along and want to eat the corn that's on the cot or on the plant in the field? Mm -hmm. Well, in order to stop the that from happening, the farmers spray it. So when those bugs go and eat that crop, they don't like it. It's nasty. Okay? okay. So the f fertilizer or the pesticides help kill the weeds and germs. So what do you think is gonna happen when the farmer sprays the crop? So pretend now this is a corn. Mm -hmm. It rains. Now the chemicals that he sprayed are on this plant. When it rains, where is it gonna go? The lake or river. Yeah, good job, you guys are getting it. It's gonna wash off into a lake or river. What is this going to do to the fish in the river? Yeah, it's going to be bad for them. That, the chemicals that kill the weeds and the insects that harm them are not going to be good for the fish. Two different types of lifestyles. You got your field and your crops, and then you got your aquatic, which is your fish, your water animals. It says pesticides... All right, during spraying, droplets of pesticides are carried off by the wind. Wind is another one. So say it's windy and the fertilizer gets sprayed all around. So it's not always going on the plant. It's also in the air. Yeah. And then it kills animals. Later, these droplets fall into lakes and rivers. Pesticides also run off the land into nearby wa bodies of water. In the United States... 85% of farmland gets sprayed with pesticides. Effects of water pollution. Alright, so now, right now we're just going to listen, okay? If you're still drawn, you can draw, but that's all we're going to draw for our water pollution. Gulf of Mexico dead zone. So this red represents the dead zones. So this, this is the effects of water pollution. So what happens because of it? With extra nutrients from fertilizer, algae grows out of control. So it's going in, the fertilizer, the pesticides are all going into these, land, these rivers and lakes, which are green as algae. The algae is a plant 
which likes its food. Its food. So it's going to what? Eat it. It's going to take over. Algae's going to go crazy because it's eating and growing and eating and growing. More water runoff. Eating, growing. So algae grows out of control. It forms thick mats on the surface of water. So if we draw a lot of algae, my pen, pretty soon this algae is covering the pond. This is bad. So you cannot see water anymore. Remember the back of this other picture? The reason I was swimming in algae. Yeah. All you see is algae on tap. It says this blocks the sunlight. So if it's sunny, it's going to block the sunlight, so the water's going to get cold. It can't. It can't go through the algae. So it's blocked. The mats block sunlight. They also use up oxygen. So when this is covered, you guys, this is why fish, like fish tanks, don't have a lid. If they have a lid, it has a little hole that you can still get the fish to breathe. But if you were to like put a fish in a Ziploc bag, like the little girl on Finding Nemo, right? Mm -hmm. She gets a fish, fishy, fishy, fishy. Shake it. She has to go home and put that fish in a tank. You cannot leave it in a baggie or a Ziploc or a Tupperware because it can't breathe. But how can't fish breathe? Instead of water has oxygen in it. It does. But the algae, that's why this is bad. That's why it's pollution. This algae grows and it acts as like a lid. It seals it up. So the fish down here... The fish down here, what? It can't breathe. Because the algae is blocking it from our water pollution. Are you guys getting it? Yeah. Okay. I am too. I'm getting it. This process. Oh. So, yes. The fish breathe in the water. But if the algae is covering the water, the fish cannot breathe. This process is called erothication. Um, that word right there. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. It creates areas called dead zones. What we're gonna draw, see if you can draw this. We're gonna draw a skull, like a poison skull. So this fish down here, it's sad. So the reason when I try to draw a skull, it just looks like a <laughs> Uh, the dead zone is where plants and animals cannot live. So this is bad. I so toxic. We're not writing toxic. We're just going to write this. We're going to draw. So you draw a circle. But don't close it. Then draw you like a little rectangle. Mm -hmm. So it kind of looks like a mushroom a little bit. Yeah, yeah. technically it does. Okay, so we have our mushroom. Next, I'm just gonna draw lines out of here. And that's gonna be our skull, our death. Okay, that does look like bones. It's a bone head. Okay, this is bad, bad, bad. Dead zones. Just like in our red here, we have dead zones where plants and fish cannot live. So if this is happening, you see a pond or a river that's full of algae, you can probably guess there's not very many fish because it's a dead zone. It had too much water pollution and algae grew out of control. One dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico covers more than 3,800 square miles. That's the area bigger than Delaware. So bigger than the state of Delaware is this dead zone. Pesticides in water are taken up by insects, foods, and fish. 
These pesticides get stored in the animal's body fat. When predators eat these animals, oh, come on. Die. Okay. So this fish down here, do you think it's sucking in this fertilizer and the pesticides that kill the bugs on the plants? Yeah. Okay. So let's say, now we have a little, um, we have a little raccoon. Uh, what did your raccoon look like? I want to see it. It's not the brightest, but. You got some sharp claws. Alright. Now we have a raccoon come along. That looks more like a cat. Something. This raccoon comes and eats this fish that has. Oh, fertilizer geez. and pesticides in it. What's gonna happen to this raccoon when he eats this fish? Die. Die. Yeah, it's not gonna be good for it either. So do you see how all this happens and it just happens to the fish? Or it happens to the lake? It happens to the fish? And then it happens, it happens to, to the, the animal that eats the fish? And then it will happen to the people. This is why it's pollution, it's bad. Very bad because it just keeps going and going to the next process. Yeah, but can you stop it? Like stop using that kind of stuff? Well, they, we can maybe try to find other options that are more natural. Yeah. But see, that's what farmers use it. Farmers need that stuff. Like cow poop. So it's really just, yes, you're right. That's exactly, good job. That's yeah. exactly what this is saying. So yeah, cow poop is fertilizer so they could use other options that are more natural like here it says natural fertilizers include animal waste or compost compost is your your poop yeah That's um i know we have a fire pit in our backyard the ashes from wood are really good for plants okay. so we dig out our fire pit Hold up. And we yeah, dump it all on the garden or vegetables. He does that. Yeah. So that's another way to fertilize something. It helps it grow. It acts as the food. Instead of me going to the store, where to go? And buying this stuff. Charcoal. So a farmer goes and sprays. Yeah. You can use this. Is it going to be good? No. Because all of that's going to happen. What is this stuff? It's orchid plant food. It's food for the plant, so it's got fertilizer in it. Yes, there are other options. That's very good thinking. Well, we will learn about ways we can better, better our economy, better our environment. But right now we're just learning about what happens, okay? One time I found a bunch of algae in the swimming pool. Mm-hmm. Algae in the swimming pool? Yeah, algae grows in the swimming pool sometimes. Um, large amounts of pesticides build up inside the predator. So after it eats this fish, now it's polluted. This buildup is called biomagnification. It kills wild animals. So now this guy is going to what? Croak. He's going to croak. Or kick the bucket. He's going to kick the bucket or croak, yes. So, this is all so, so bad. So, it can kill wild animals. In the 1960s, the American bald eagle almost died due to biomagnification. So, you got your birds. Your eagle, right? Birds come down and eat the fish. What's going to happen to the birds? It's going to die. It's going to die. Kick the bucket. Pesticides are very harmful to frogs. Froggies. You got your frogs that live in the ponds and creeks. Uh, oh, I've got to go leave. Now the frogs, it says, take these chemicals through their skin. So it necessarily doesn't drink or eat the fish, but the fish or the frog is in but the they pond. they breathe through the skin. Yeah. So the skin is being exposed. It's getting all of those chemicals from our one little farmer over here that has to spray wow, his good plants. Dog yeah, not very good, huh? All right, we're getting there. Solutions are over here. 
the even in farmers don't do that. <laughs> even in small amounts, pesticides can cause health problems. For example, farmers who handle pesticides have higher chances of getting cancer than people who do not work in the farm fields. Pesticides can also harm people who drink polluted water or eat fish from the polluted lakes. Some farmers wear protective suits when handling the pesticides. Okay, uh, now I don't want to eat fish. <laughs> these, beans, these bean plants add nutrients to the soil, so the next year's crop will need less fertilizer. So he decided to plant these bean plants that helps the soil get nice and rich. So, did they do our meat? Mm -mm. No, we're just learning about the water right now. So, these are solutions for water pollution. Farmers want to reduce, which means get rid of, have less of, the problems caused by fertilizers. So, farmers do want to, they want to do better. They are trying to raise crops using fewer chemicals. Crop rotation is one way to do this. Farmers plant corn one year, then the next year they plant beans. Beans act as a neutral fertilizer and add nutrients back into the soil. Couldn't they just use cow poop? They could, yeah, but then they gotta go find cows. Then they gotta go get the poop. Then they gotta load the poop. Then they gotta take the poop to the field. Then how are you going to get poop all over your 20 uh, acres of farmland? You, uh, David Jane, hold up. There's a lot to it. Like a bomb. It's a whole lot easier just to go and spray it. So, yes, we're, they hopefully we'll think of new ways. They said rotating the crops. So doing beans one year, corn the next. As a bonus, even, insects that eat corn do not eat beans. While beans are growing, corn-eating insects die out. All right, last page for this. Even with crop rotation, fertilizers and pesticides are something are sometimes necessary, meaning it has to be done. They just have to do it. But farmers can use less by spraying chemicals on only what is needed most. Farmers also reduce pollution by spraying only when there is no chance of wind or rain. That is so smart. Just like I go out and spray my weeds. I go around with my little sprayer and kill all my little dandelions. All the little weeds growing in my sidewalk, I spray. First, I check the weather. Do you think I'm going to go spray outside if it's going to rain that night? Because what's going to happen to all the plants that I just sprayed to kill them? Wash away, wash away, baby, pond. All that's going to happen, right? Right. So I'm going to check the weather. So it said farmers check their weather. So maybe it's, there's a whole week where there's no rain in the forecast. Okay, I'm going to go spray. Because that means Something bad's going to the happen. fertilizer can be soaked into the plant, into the roots, and it won't rain. It's just going to suck it all up. So planning is really important in farming as well. So that is it for our water pollution today. Tomorrow we will go to number two with air pollution. So make sure that you have this all drawn correctly. This is a beautiful picture of what water pollution is.